Welcome to my infinite gold farm guide with Queen Sigma. I will explain everything while I play, but I will skip the segments where nothing happens. Since I have multiple options for certain things, I will just show visuals where you for example see all the arcana used and what are optional and which one you could replace, but aside from this I will just explain it as we play. Go for 3 max weapons, you can't go for more, you could go for less, but then you would lose a weapon that is really good for you. Go on Capella Magna and as the first arcana choose Wicked Season. Go over to the merchant and pick up the candy box. You can either go for Gatti Amari or Laurel. I just like to kick it off with Gatti Amari, it's a little bit more helpful, but aside from this it doesn't matter too much. And on the first 6 level ups that I get, I want to get 6 unique passive items. As a second arcana I will go for Boogaloo of Illusions. This will scale up the area that we have. And as I said we go for unique ones, next up is Scholomaniac. And the third arcana will be Divine Bloodline. This helps you a lot to early on farm the enemies in general, but it doesn't matter too much since your main weapon also has retaliation. Torna's box, very good. However, it scales you up and allows you to keep going forever since the Reaper will be killed by this weapon. The first thing that I will do is just head upwards. There's Stone Mask, very good. And I want to pick up the crown as soon as possible. There are certain weapons and items that we have that I want to max out as fast as possible so we get a lot of kills and kickstart this entire thing. But since I will not use Mad Groove, I have to walk around and get all the stuff. Now Mad Groove is a valid strategy in farming runs that you do it early on that you get as much curse as possible. But if you take a look at this, there are not really a lot of enemies that spawn and it doesn't matter too too much here. Not saying it wouldn't be worth it, but it doesn't matter too much. Empty Tome. Now I only need one more, I'm down to 67 rerolls. That was a long one for the tracked orb. We will pick up the crown and the level up priority is pretty much Empty Tome, Skullomaniac, Torunas Box, Crown, though Crown a little bit earlier than what I just said. Pretty much when I get Crown or Skullomaniac I will always pick them. Empty Tome will help killing more enemies, which then helps you to get more enemies faster. And you want to get your main weapon to level 8. Since at that point it will unlock the critical strikes as well as this vertical beam, the finisher move, which kills a lot of enemies very quickly. Crown, very good. Up until 2 minutes the wave is pretty much horrible where I don't bother about it too much, as in farming them. Instead we will just run over to the two rings, we need to pick up both of them and you have to be a little bit careful with the guardians but they shouldn't be a big problem. The main reason where my recommendation for these arcana is coming from is for some people it will lag their entire game to death if they don't use a retaliation arcana that just bumps up your damage numbers by crazy amounts and kills the red death at the end. However if lag is not a problem even if you have hundreds of reapers jumping around you then you don't need to go for this and you can go for mad groove. But I still think that the effect of mad groove is really limited, it doesn't do too too much so that is a decision that you have to make. I tested this with multiple variations and none of them really stood out. I usually had worse performance with Mad Groove since it also pulls in the freezes constantly and killing your kill timer just because you freeze the enemies is not something that you want to do. As you can see there are a lot more enemies spawning. At this point since I still have to walk I want to upgrade my weapon a little bit that it hits more enemies and make sure that you always walk through them. When curse is going on you can actually just turn around if you want and walk into them like this that you kill more of them. Don't worry about your HP, you're not losing HP, you're actually gaining HP since you get 0.5 HP every single time someone gets retaliation damage. And by the way if you want to see this being taken to the extreme with several hundred thousand HP I have a video linked on the end card where you see that. So at this point I pretty much have almost everything maxed out that I want. We have now Victory Sword, the Critical Hits and the Combo Finisher. The Guardians spawn here, don't bother with them too much, just pick up this stuff, you can even walk through them, they don't really tickle you. At this point it's good to just max out Toruna and if Laurel shows up then just take it. We will pick up the Duplicator for two more projectiles, oh that is bad. One thing to mention about the two weapons that we have right now, the Sword and Gatia Mari. We need to be very careful when we evolve both of them. In fact Gatia Mari I don't want to evolve it at all until the very end of the game 
And for Victory Sword, I want to evolve it somewhat soonish. And we have to make sure that it doesn't go over our growth. Because otherwise, you can run into a lot of issues where your entire growth cycle is blocked, or most of it. So what I recommend doing is, while you walk around, always pay attention to the timer. And when it switches, then make sure that you first kill the boss and avoid the chests. Scaling up Gatti Amari with food actually has a benefit. The increases that Gatti Amari gets from eating food carries over to its evolution. That also means the limit break bonuses that you get carry over. Oh, there's Laurel. Let's pick it up. But the nice part is, the more chickens that they ate, the more likely the evolution becomes to transform any item into gold. There we have the duplicator. Let's pick it up. And I will just max it out right away. We are not under pressure to do this as fast as possible. With these things, keep in mind that this is an infinite farm. So the main focus is not really on what we are doing right now, but to set up an amazing farming period once this entire thing is done. Once you're done maxing out your weapons and items that you care about, I recommend that you put Gatiamari to level 5 and this is where you leave it be. A reason being, you don't want to accidentally evolve it too early while you walk around and a boss walks into you for example, but you will obviously have to max it out once you get to later stages of the game. They are the last two guardians that we have to take care of, this is actually fairly simple. Pick up the metal on your right that points to the left side and the other one just discard it. Don't pick it up, if you evolve your laurel to crimson shroud then it will kill the reaper and trigger the scene where the white hand will kill you. Now with this build that you have right now, you will still kill the reaper, but since you don't have crimson shroud which is required to trigger the scene, you can just keep going forever. Now at this point be very careful that you don't accidentally evolve the sword at the wrong time. If we take a look, there's a chest not too far away. I will head over there and pick it up. And there we are. The timer where I want to pick it up is pretty much the moment curse started, just a little teeny tiny bit later. So there we go, and upgrade. It will take roughly 3 seconds-ish until it starts kicking off the ability. And the amazing part about it is, there we go, we evolved it at 6.30, and now it will pop off, there we go. When you pick up something now, it will not apply whatever doubling you have at the bottom, but it will wait until you get out of this universe animation and then it will apply the growth doubling because this comes after the curse. So this is the entire strategy behind this. So instead of just having 10 seconds while the growth is active to collect the gems, you now have pretty much around 16 seconds. So 6 seconds of the curse while the universe is active and then the 10 seconds of growth. The next arcana that I will pick is Silent Old Sanctuary. Technically speaking you can already go for Disco of Gold, but I want to maximize the amount of kills that we get here, that we have the highest level possible, or as good as possible. There are actually a lot of things that can differ how many level ups you will get, and one we will see very soon. Once you get into here just click random always. As I said, the might bonuses that you get on Gatia Mari, they will translate over and the entire thing will not be a big deal. Actually, I won't have this amount there. Okay, but now, random always. We are right now at this point and for the rest of the video, I will give you tips on how to get gold bags, how to get vacuums, how to level up more or less reliably, as reliable as it can be. But these guide videos, they take a lot of effort. Especially since I try to upload two videos a day, they take up a lot of time just for one individual video. So if it helped you so far, please consider subscribing and checking out one or two more videos just to see if you like my content. And it would be great if you could give the video a like. As you can see a chest dropped next to me. Whenever this happens, I like to just move away to reduce the chances that I will pick them up. I'm saying that because you kind of want to get the red gem that is around while the curse is going on with the universe and pick it up with the growth doubling. Now in case this doesn't happen too often, it's not a big deal. But there we go, I just managed to get it. Disco of gold, that is the final one. The cats will naturally just pick up vacuums over time and while it's not always while the growth is doubled, it's still way way higher of a level that you'll reach as if you would go for vicious hunger. This does mean that you get less gold overall, but again, we are setting up the perfect grinding time, we don't care too much about what happens in the first 30 minutes. Now on the map you can actually see where the vacuums are, there's also a freeze, that's not great. But now I will wait until we have the growth going on with the explosion, there we go. I can just pick up the vacuum 
And yeah, we just heard it. It's now soaked in old experience. Now we come out of the universe and a bunch of level ups happen. There we go. With the cats, don't bother to position yourself right. There's not really a position that is incredibly good or bad. They will eat enough, don't worry about that. In fact, if you are close to too many breakables, it can also be bad since they may freeze the enemies again and again and again and again and again. So below me is a vacuum. I will pick this up in this rotation. There we go. Sadly, I can't see it, but I think I got it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I got it. Very nice. By the way, if Gatti Amari lags your game too much and it slows down everything, you can't do it. You can either decide to stick with it, because you know that once you're over, that is gone. And that is for the majority of the farming period, right? Because an infinite build is meant for overnight, for example. But if it's too bad, hey, don't worry. Just evolve it, get rid of Gatia Mari. I think I just got another vacuum. Let me see. And there we go. I got the vacuum a little late, but I found it. Oh, that's a decent amount. Now again, there are chests up here. I don't want to have them. We could technically speaking pick up the luck there. You know what? I'll do that. 10% is 10%. Now let's say you don't have a vacuum around, like right now here. Oh, there's a chest next to me, that's bad. Always be aware where the chests drop and press escape and just check where they are whenever you hit a full minute. But let's say this is right now the case because it is the case. How do you then get the experience? Well, you kind of have to gamble. Don't let it sit there because the cats will eventually get a vacuum on their own and then you don't get it when you want. But what I do is I just walk to the top right of my screen, to the bottom. And there's a 50% chance that I just got the red gem. If I don't get it, I would do it on the next rotation. But as you can see, I got it. In other words, where you want to get is to the corner up here of your screen, where my mouse is right now. You don't even have to go that far because we have a tracked orb. And then just walk down. Technically speaking, you could do the same thing on the left side. But at this point, if the red gem wasn't there, it's accumulated somewhere entirely different. And I would just say wait until the next rotation. 12 minutes, looking out for a chest. Is there one being dropped? Let's see. Yeah, there was one. Oh, there's actually a vacuum down there. Ooh, this is risky. Especially chests straight to the bottom are hard to see, since the gold fever will cover up the arrows. And there we go. Right now, also no gold fever is going, so what I do is I usually walk always at the side of this wall, uh, just for you as a reference point. It's roughly in the top right corner of each tile set, but this is right next to the where the weapon slots are. Here. Whenever you see this corner, just walk alongside it, and you should get a gold bag usually. To my left is another vacuum. That means I will just wait here until the curse is back. And there we go, let's walk to the left side. I think I just heard it. Yeah, we picked it up very good. That means everything will be sent towards me, the old experience. There we go. Now, if it ever happens that you accidentally evolve Vicious Hunger, it's better if you don't do it, but it's also not a big deal if you do it. In fact, you can decide if you want to evolve to Vicious Hunger at 28 minutes, 29 minutes, or at 30 minutes. I had very varying results with these, and I think it mainly has to do with how much experience they actually eat. Like, if they eat the big red gem that sometimes appears, it's really bad. But if you get it, then you put a ton of levels into Vicious Hunger, which will then help you that you have more Vicious Hunger, faster Vicious Hunger and everything. So, walking around again to the corners. It's just a 50% chance, hoping for the best, but we got it. Oh, perfect vacuum timing of the cats. There, didn't even need to do anything. I love these guys. Okay, Dex, but why do you want to keep leveling up all the time instead of just getting more gold? Well, first of all, 135k is fine. Like, it's not great, but it's not nothing. It's just saying this in comparison, that it's not like we don't get any gold. But look at our stats right now. The higher the luck, the faster the stuff will respawn. And the higher the greed, the more gold we will get. As well as curse, this affects the trainees that spawn. And that means you kill more of them, which then means you get more gold, because every single kill will be transformed into gold. By the way, if you ever need a gold bag and you're not sure where to look, you can always press escape and see where chickens or other droppables are. This is usually where you also have a ton of gold accumulated and can just walk there and pick it up. Do we get the bonus here? Hopefully. This would be worth a lot. Uh, I will even walk over here. There we go. And over here. Uh, this should guarantee it. Yeah, there we go. 
By the way, we almost reached level 500. In case I didn't make this clear, why I didn't pick up the Tiragisu or the Arrow, there's no reason to pick them up. They don't help you in any way, and you just waste level ups on them. Now, the waste is very minimal, minimally, but, like, why do something that is bad for you, right? Instead, we can just get a few more limit break level ups, and that is definitely better, even if it's just a slight margin. So over here is a vacuum. I... Uh, I don't want to gamble on it, to be honest. I will just walk to the left side and see if I can get through. It almost looks like it. That is very good. Okay. But yeah, just as an advice, don't do that, okay? Don't do something risky where you may accidentally pick up a chest if you don't want to have Vicious Hunger evolved. And there we go, the universe... Da, da, go, 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 down, 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 down. I got it. Nice. Now we can just walk away. Actually, I want this to catch up. There we go. And 541 too. 574. That's decent. Oh, not a vacuum. So, yet again, as I advised previously, we sadly can't see it right now. But down here is the corner that I talked about. You can see that, that I'm standing at the top here, at the corner of this. This is usually the one that performs the best for me. You can go left, you can go down to get gold bags whenever you need them. And overall, it's the best one for me. Okay, this should be a decent level up. I would like to have that. Just gotta be very careful with chests that are on the floor. There we go, we heard the vacuum. Very good. Now, I will not wait here. This is where the corner is. There, you can see it for a moment. Instead, I will go up and I will go to another corner. And there's the next corner. I, I know it's hard to see, but you have to believe me. There's the corner bottom left. And by the way, from the one vacuum that I picked up there, I'm still leveling up. 787. Look at these stats. So, I want to talk about something quickly. I'm right now at a point where the enemies get constantly frozen. You can see they are blue now. They are blue for most of the time. It might be more beneficial to evolve to Wishes Hunger, so no more freezes can be picked up. But it's really a rough one to decide which one is better, because I had such varying resources. Like, my top run had no Vicious Hunger evolved, but then I have a bunch of runs with Vicious Hunger evolved, and then comes Gatti Amari again with three runs. So it seems like having Gatti Amari until 30 minutes has the highest potential, but going for Vicious Hunger around the 25 minute mark seems to be the one that is the most consistent. So right now we are 28 minutes, this is where you could evolve Vicious Hunger. I think we need to have a talk about this, which one is more efficient. We are right now at 657k gold, which is a decent value, you know? It's not as great as if you had Vicious Hunger, but it's decent. But the thing is, when you evolve to Vicious Hunger, the result in levels can only be worse. There's no way it can be better, and it will eat experience. And I personally value this buff here a lot more. Now, if you don't plan to have a long run, then I would say get Vicious Hunger as soon as possible. That is better. But if you plan to do this overnight, or while you're away or something like this, like for 5, 6, 7, 8 hours, Go as far as possible. Get this weapon as strong as possible. So I keep picking up... <laughs> that is one cat. I keep picking up freezes like crazy right now. And what I will do is, I will just evolve to Wishes Hunger, that it stops giving me freezes. The last wave is very valuable, and while I did say that you can only lose experience, well, in comparison to constantly freezing the enemies, it's better. And there's a chest. Aw. Oh, there we go. Welcome to the team, Vicious Hunger. I will now run down in hopes that I find a vacuum. Uh, I actually got one, very good, because this will put a ton of level ups into Vicious Hunger. It won't be crazy, but it will be decent. Do you see, by the way, how slowly we level up now? <laughs> yeah, not that amazing. And there we go, with a vacuum I get a ton of level ups. So this will be the last attempt at getting a vacuum. I will just run down, this is on the side of the corner that I was at. I have to go down very, very far, and I hope I get a vacuum here. I don't think I got- actually, oh, uh, no, I didn't get one. That was sad. But there we go, this is now the final- oh, there's actually a freeze. Uh, they converted it, nice. So where I like to position myself is, over here is the corner. It's really hard to see, I'm sorry. But the corner is at the top right of the map. Only the tiles that you're in generates the breakables, that you can get items out of them. So forget about standing in the middle of here. But the easiest way to do it is just head down, follow the carpet, next to the throne, stick to the left side, and then stay here. Press escape, make sure that the pointer here is on the left side of the line, so the left side is loaded. And this is just where you can let it run. 
So I will let this run now for a bit, just that I have some footage. I think it's obvious that I will not die, but it's kind of important to see that the Reapers will not survive. You can actually even see when the Reaper gets in usually, because our sword mainly targets the Reaper, the rest just dies over time, especially to the Vicious Hunger, but also the main attack. And you can see with our gold counter that this is just jumping up like crazy. Alright, we're exactly one hour in. Let's quit here because I have other stuff to do. And there we go, 3.9 million gold in 60 minutes. Given that we were at 1 million gold, roughly at 30 minutes, you can expect around 5 to 6 million gold per hour. As in the 30 minutes that we spent here in the infinite farming got us 2.9 million. So stretch to an hour, that would be 5.8-ish.